not actively engaged in speaking to um, minimize the background noise um, during the webinar. If you have a question, um, use the raise the hand feature and um, we'll take questions um, kind of midway through the webinar so that you'll have an opportunity to have your questions answered. Um, we're happy to see everybody join us. So if you're dressed, please turn on your videos. We'd like to see actual people, faces. We don't care if your hair is not combed as long as you have clothes on, okay? We do have a set agenda for today, but it definitely includes you. So um, be sure to get your hand raised well ahead of time if you have a question. One quick note, um, Primetime Notaries does have a website. It's primetimenotaries.com. And there's a contact page that um, you can access if you want to submit any questions. Your questions for the next session to contact at primetimenotaries.com. Stay tuned today. At the end of the webinar, we're going to do a giveaway for you. Okay? My name is Beth Hackett. I've been a notary since 1994 and a signing agent since 2001. Um, I did work for a local title company as a processor and a closer for the last year that I was there. Um, and I did that for a few years before stepping off that corporate moving sidewalk and starting my own signing service. That dissolved when the market crashed in 08 and 09. So since then, I've just concentrated on building my own business. I'm also a trainer with the Notary Stars um, training group. I'm joined by Ms. Carol Ray, Mr. Ronnie Nickel, and Ms. Phyllis Trailer. Um, and I'd like to get some introductions going. Ms. Phyllis, if you would like to unmute, please, and tell everyone a little bit about yourself. Okay, can y'all hear me? I can hear you, Miss Beth. Looks like Miss Ellis almost got un unmuted there. Oh, you know what? I bet I have to unmute her myself. Let's see. I don't know which one you are, Phyllis. There's a couple of you on here. Should be the one on the Can you hear me? There we go. Hi. Thank you. I am unmuted. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Phyllis Trailer, and I am so happy to be here this evening. A uh, little bit of background about myself. I am in uh, the San Antonio area of Texas. Uh, I've been a notary for about 12 years now. I am retired from the Army. I spent about 20 years in the Army. Just a little bit over 20 years in the Army. Um, after that, I taught full-time. I was a full-time professor at a local college and a visiting professor at a local university. Uh, in 2018, I was a National Notary Association Notary of the Year Special Honoree. In 2019, I was invited by the Texas Secretary of State to speak at their Notary Public Conference. Uh, in 2020 and 2021, I was invited by the National Business in Institute to do a presentation on RON for attorneys for their continuing education. I am the owner of the Texas Notary Public Training Academy and the Texas Notary Patron Learning Membership Community. I'm also the second half of Notary Gals Training. It's a monthly training that I do with Michelle Raleigh. And we also have a, uh, a club called the Notary Lounge on Clubhouse. And we meet every Sunday at 3 p.m. So please join us where we share a lot of good notary information. Thank you, Beth. Thank you, Phyllis. Yeah, Clubhouse is only available for Apple users, correct? 
Apple, if you have a, uh, a iPhone and an iPad or iPad, so you can okay. use either one. Or I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Us Android users are left out in the cold. Yeah, they are. We'll be opening it up to Android users soon. I'm just not sure when, but it's a great platform, and uh, we use it to do, like I said, our training on Sundays, and we have a great group of people show up for that. Great group of notaries from all over. So please join us. Thank you so much. Um, our other cohort, Miss Carol Ray. Carol, if you can unmute and give us um, your little speech about who you are and what you do. Okay, well, my name is Carol Ray, and I am uh, a retired uh, escrow person. I was an escrow officer for years, and then an escrow manager. Uh, and then I did 14 years as a signing agent. <coughs> Excuse me. And in 2009, I came to the realization that notaries didn't know what they were doing, and there was no good training. And I watched some really good people who would have been great uh, loan signing agents uh, fail before they ever got started because the training was not there. So I created Notary to Pro. We're going into our 12th year. I just can't believe it. Um, and uh, we've got tens of thousands of graduates all over the country now, and they're doing great. Um, and that's about it. In fact, uh, one of my very first students was Phyllis. <laughs> And uh, we both live in Texas now, and uh, we're just waiting until COVID's over so we can, we can hug. <laughs> but I, I love what I do, and uh, I'm real excited uh, working with Ronnie now. Um, he's a great guy, and I love Notary Stars. And Beth also was one of my graduates, and she's just amazing what she's doing now. And um, that's about it. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this evening and hearing what everybody else has to say. Thank you, Carol. Thank you so much. And our last co-host is Mr. Ronnie Mickle. Hi, Ms. Beth. Can you hear me? I can. All right. Um, so uh, my name is Ronnie Mickle. I uh, own two companies. One is Unlimited Ink Notary, which is a signing agency. We do signings nationwide. Some of you have, may have worked with us at some point. And then we also own NotarySTARS.com, which is a directory that you can list yourself, but we provide uh, ongoing continuing education. Um, we are partners with Notary to Pro, so we actually want you to start at Notary to Pro. We sell Notary to Pro on our on NotaryStars.com. Uh, what we do is we actually train live four nights a week, and we um, are have one general mentorship a week. Uh, we also have a phone line where notaries that are under the Notary Star program can call in and ask us questions. Um, I did ask permission to do this uh, during our meeting before we do this. So a little plug, uh, we do a notary boot camp every quarter. And in that boot camp, it is live. Uh, these sessions are about two hours or longer where we go page by page over every kind of uh, document you could come in contact with, buyer, seller, refinance, FHA, VA, trust. This quarter is a very, uh, very extensive because we're adding in power of attorney trust signings and uh, and uh, also manager member signings. So if you are needing uh, more training, we are doing this live and now's a great time to get started and get caught up by April when we do our next notary boot camp. Awesome, perfect. All right guys, so that is our panel of uh, experts for you. Phyllis Trailer, Carol Ray and Ronnie Neville. I'm going to start us off by giving you a couple of notary hacks. So we try to pull in one or two notary hacks every time we put on our monthly webinar. Some of them are focused at the older notary or notaries of a certain age, like Carol likes to say. Um, and some of them are just general notary hacks. So the first one was actually submitted by our own Mr. Ronnie Nickel. Um, and he has um, a hack for back problems. And I have, I'm kind of in that same position. As I've gotten older, I've kind of whittled or brought in my um, travel area to probably no more than 30 minutes travel distance one way because I can't sit in my car longer than that without getting out looking like I'm 100 years old. 
Um, Rodney Meckel also has back problems. He was in a car accident that left him with some issues to deal with. But um, we all love those lidocaine patches. Those lidocaine patches you can uh, peel off, stick to your back, um, and they're wonderful if they stayed on. So Ronnie has submitted that he uses one of the cloth um, Velcro back braces. When he puts that lidocaine patch on, he puts that little waist whittling, makes it look very spelt when he has it on. Puts on that little waist whittling <laughs> back brace. If you don't mind, Miss Miss Hathood, I'd love to just show people what I do really quick. Um, I have no shame. Uh, I broke my back about uh, 10 years ago while working as a notary, um, right in front of Chase Bank, I got run over by a car and it's been residual and I have a back brace on um, that I wear under my clothes and, you know, I'm not being inappropriate, but this back brace is, you know, form fitting. And then right, what I do is I put that pain patch right down in my back brace. And I'm telling you, those pain patches are meant to fall off because they want to sell more of them. But whether you're working or not, if you do have uh, residual pain like that, you can use your back brace to hold on your, your, your pain patch. And they're designed to work for 12 hours. And I will tell you, if I put mine on as soon as I get out of the shower and wrap up, and it, it really does work. A lot of people don't use them because it seems to fall off after a few hours of sweating or moving around. But if you have back issues, you I have, sometimes I double up. I put one, I turn it long ways and put one on both sides. Uh, so if you're having back issues, that can really be your saving grace to have that support and something keeping that back uh, pain patch in, in place. Somebody else in the chat is telling us that um, she uses yoga balls, which um, yoga all by itself has got to be beneficial. Um, it's strengthening and stretching in the same uh, movement. Um, and then she puts the yoga balls with that as well. Good idea. Thank you, guys. Um, our second hack is a little app. And this is not just for the older notary, but um, for any notary that is going out to people's homes and businesses and um it's called Life360. It's an app that's available for Android and Apple. Um, and this is a location um, device for yourself or any other members of your family. My husband and I both do uh, notary work and we both have this app on our phone and we, you can add members to your circle. This app will actually let you know real time where someone is in your in your members. So when I leave the house, my husband gets a ding on his phone and it says um, driving activated for Beth. And it shows him precisely where I'm going and what I'm doing. Um, and he kind of knows my schedule, but if I'm at a location um, longer than he thinks is appropriate, then he knows exactly where I'm at. This app also, um, has an alert feature. If I'm in trouble, it's a one quick button push and it alerts um, people in my member group that I'm in trouble. Um, and it also calls the police. So, and it location-based, location services, so they know exactly where you are. Um, it also has roadside service um, capability. So if you get a flat tire or something happens, um, and that's, the basic app is free and all by itself, it's a good app. Um, and then there are paid services. So the roadside service is an additional fee. Um, and, um, but that's just clicking a button. They know precisely where you are. You don't even have to tell them. You're looking around in the middle of the night, it's dark. I don't really know where I am. I'm somewhere around blah, blah, blah. Location services will tell them exactly where you are if you need roadside assistance. Um, it also um, has a few other um, safety features on it. If you have a child that you want to track, or my husband uses this and he tells me um, that he knows exactly how many miles I went from the beginning of the month until then. 
and it'll give him my average top speed on miles. And he will tell me, you're going too fast. You're driving too fast. Your app says your average top speed was 84 miles an hour. You need to slow down. That's not true. I'm lying. I'm just making that up. You don't drive that fast. Anyway, um, a lot of um, safety features on this. So um, being able to locate you precisely. Um, and it's collected data. So if your phone, if you are separated from your phone, that data is still on your um, emergency um, person's information. So they can still find you. They can still send help. They can still come to you themselves. It's a really, really great app to have. And it's got so much more to it if you want to pay for it. And I don't pay for much, <laughs> but the basic services for me, they're really great. All righty, guys. We're going to start on our main topic here. Um, I think we're going to start with Miss Carol Ray. Carol, if you would like to unmute, Carol's going to talk to us. Her, her uh, topic title is Back to Basics. Unmute. There, you there go. we go. Okay. I couldn't unmute. You don't drive 84 miles an hour? I was just fibbing. Just well, they, they don't call me Grammy Zoom Zoom for nothing. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, I wanted to talk a, a, a couple of things. Actually, I won't go so much into the basic things, but I do want to bring up a couple of things that are important uh, to know in our life today. Uh, we went down to, we're in Texas now. We just recently moved and we went down to renew uh, our licenses and uh, found out that we needed to bring a lot more than what we thought we needed to bring because the real ID now is here. October the 1st of this year, it's going to be a required thing uh, for getting on airplanes and a lot of other situations, you need to have it. So I just want everybody to know that if your license is needing to be changed or renewed, uh, you need to expect that you're gonna be going into the DMV with uh, your birth certificate, your social security card. Uh, you need a couple of proofs of address and uh, they're serious about it. They won't even talk to you unless you have those things. We had to come home and then go through all kinds of stuff trying to find uh, birth certificates. Um, these are also known as the uh, STAR card uh, because there's on some some of the ones they have uh, either gold or black star somewhere on that. And then my husband just got his yesterday and he was showing me his regular picture is on the driver's license, but way down in the right hand corner underneath some, uh, some wording and some uh, little things that cover, cover it, there's his picture also. And that's how they check to make sure that it is really you because they can't do anything to change that picture uh, on the card. So I just wanted to, um, to pass that on. And um, there's a couple of other things. Oh yeah, we, uh, we just went because I'm 78, my husband's 83, we were top of the list to be able to get our COVID shot. And I was kind of not sure whether I really wanted to do it or not, but I'm glad I did. They are working. I haven't heard anything really horrible about uh, the outcome uh, of it. And it was, we went in there, they, they timed you every two minutes. So it was like, if they said you had to be there at 11.02, that was when we had to be there standing in the line. And uh, for any of you who are thinking about doing it and a little bit afraid, it was very easy process. They made it very easy for us. Uh, you do have to wait, and it didn't hurt at all. I didn't even know when they put it in. And, but they do make you wait like 20 minutes to 30 minutes after the shot, just to make sure that nothing happens, uh, fainting or dizziness or anything like that. So um, now about basics, uh, I go through this a lot with my uh, students, graduates. One of the things that you need to um, really think about we do, we train, as, as a lot of you know, I see a lot of the graduates here. We train how to become loan signing agents, all every aspect of being a signing agent. 
but I want to remind everybody out there what your job is. Your job basically as a notary public is to, first of all, you're a servant of your state. So you have to remember that you are a servant, that you are there to service people uh, with your uh, expertise. You want to always make sure that you keep in mind that your major responsibility is to identify people. Don't, when you're, when you're at a signing table, don't just take that ID and put the information down in your journal and hand it back to them. You want to take the original ID, you want to turn it over, you want to look at it, make sure there's no bubbles on it, nothing, nothing that's out of the usual. You want to compare that person with the description on that driver's license uh, or passport or whatever you have. You want to make sure that they look like, if it says that they're 52, you don't, don't have a 26 year old sitting in front of you. You want to make sure that if it says somebody weighs 194 pounds, that you don't have some skinny little person sitting. You need to really be cautious and take your time about checking the identifications. It's very important. There are books out there that you can have that will, if you get a lot of out of state uh, signings and things that you can compare driver's licenses uh, with the uh, actual driver's licenses in this book. So you can look for certain things and people can't just pull out, you know, something phony on you. Um, and I, unless you have something else that you think I should be passing on, uh, Beth, that's, that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about um, as far as the basics, because I go into that so extensively on, you know, in our course. Um, other than that, there was only one other thing I wanted to talk about. I know that a lot of you are new and by new, I mean within the last maybe five, six, seven years. Uh, but I will tell you that something happened in 2013 that changed all of our lives as notaries and notary signing agents. And that was called SPW. Uh, that's the Signing Professionals Work Group. And it, it flipped everything over for us. Um, I recognized when they came up with it, it was a group of lenders, major lenders, major bank banks decided to form a group where they wanted to instruct notaries as to how they wanted them to conduct their business. And um, it didn't take too much to figure out that what they were really trying to do is take control and tell us what to do and how to do our job. Um, I'm not gonna go into details about it, but I will tell you that I did a, a, a long explanation and blog about that years ago. And if you're interested in finding out why you have the background screenings and why you have a certain code of conduct that you need to be aware of, um, you might be interested in reading that. And I'm not sure where we're gonna post it, probably on our website. My daughter, Barbara is here this evening and she's my right hand so she can she can tell us where it's going to be but you might find it very very interesting and other than that I think that I'm finished and I welcome everybody I'm so glad that so many people came we really appreciate you being here and we hope that it's a benefit to uh, benefit you all oh, I have to say thank you Carol you know in a my way one other additional comment to your statement about um, making sure that the uh, ID matches your signers. I think that we all get so focused on getting to the table and starting our process. We have this um, routine set in our mind and we're bound and determined that's what we're going to focus on and get through. And I think sometimes that creates a um, situation where we're bypassing taking our time looking at those IDs. In fact, um, I just signed somebody this past week um, that wore a mask at the table. And when I asked them to remove their mask so that I could see all of their face and match it with the picture on their ID, the wife 
said to me, we just did this um, July last year and no one asked us to take off a mask then. And of course, you know, I was shocked. I'm thinking, how the heck can you tell what somebody looks like when you're only seeing this much of their face? Me, you could probably tell. It's the hair, the glasses, maybe. But a lot of people, I cannot identify when they have a mask on. Phyllis, any comment on that? Anybody have any questions? Okay, we're going to move on to um, Phyllis. Her topic for this evening is avoiding burnout. So some of you may be just be getting started. Some of you um, have got years in this business. And we know that last year kind of kicked booty with all the business that was out there um, and probably got burnt out. So Phyllis. Tell us what you know. Mute, unmute. Let me find you here. You might be able to help. <clears throat> I cannot unmute you, Phyllis. Okay, so hang on here just a second. Let me change one control here. All right, now try it again. Okay, I'm unmuted. <laughs> Thank you, Beth. So I am talking about um, something that I am very, um, that I have experienced since owning my own business and that is avoiding burnout. And one of the things that I would uh, wholeheartedly suggest is that you don't wait for it to actually happen. If you see it starting to happen, then you go ahead and make adjustments. So um, if you're starting to feel even a little bit of burnout, you need to just back up, take stock, take a look at what you're doing. Because a lot of times when we start doing our notary work, especially as loan signing agents, we see that the business is really cyclic. So you have times where you're really, really busy. You know, the interest rate is low. Everybody is refinancing. Everybody is purchasing property. And then once that uh, interest rates start climbing back up, things start slowing down. So what a lot of us have done in the past, because it's so cyclic, is that we've added additional services to our business. So, you know, you have your general notary work, some people add process serving, form I nines, just different things so you can have multiple streams of in income. But if you get into a point where you're starting to feel a little burned out, you might look at um, saying, well, maybe I need to cut down on the number of services that I'm uh, offering and just take a look at maybe deleting services. Uh, another thing I did when I was going through, when I could feel myself burning out was I would reduce my hours. I would go to every one of my online profiles with uh, the different services and I would cut down my hours because I could tell that I couldn't handle all the work that I was getting. So, and I wanted to not advertise uh, being available when I really didn't want to do the work. So I cut down on my hours. I also uh, reduced the days of operation. And it made all the difference in the world. Because when you're tired and you're trying to do something and you're feeling burnout, you start making mistakes. You start being irritable. So when people call you, it's hard to have that smile in your voice and you know sound like you're ready to go out there and do some work when you're burnt out. So another thing I would suggest you do is also pair up with another notary in your area. One or two other notaries that you feel very comfortable working with and that you feel that if you refer work to them, that they will do a good job. Because if you refer work to them, then whatever they do is gonna be a reflection on you. 
So make sure it's somebody that you feel comfortable working with. Uh, again, your signs of burnout, you know, irritability, irritability, making mistakes, lack of motivation, loss of interest, you know, constant fatigue. If you start experiencing any of that, you need to look at, okay, what am I doing? What, what changes I need to make, do I need to make? So you don't get really caught up in a, in a rut. And remember, it's okay to turn down assignments. You know, just because somebody called you doesn't mean you have to say yes. It's okay to turn down an assignment. And that's why I say pair up with somebody else, because that way, if you do turn down the assignment, at least you have another notary that you can refer them to. Also, you don't have to work with, with everybody. Sometimes our, some of that burnout can come from working with clients that are really, truly hard to work with. So it's okay that sometimes you might have to fire a client. It's okay, you don't have to work with everybody, okay? You fire one client, I'll guarantee you another one is gonna come by. And you just treat them right, you know, but if they're not treating you right, you don't have to continue to work with them because that will just add to your irritability, leave a bad taste in your mouth, and it just has all kinds of negative effects. So you don't want to do that. Um, and just remember that you can, you're can you only one person. You cannot be everything to everybody. So when somebody calls you and they say, well, I got this, this document. I really need notarized like right now. You know, that doesn't mean you have to drop everything you're doing and go run out and, and help them. You know, if you're working with somebody else, you can refer them to somebody else. You know, somebody else's emergency is not your emergency. So, you know, take care of yourself. That's number one, so that you can do a great job. That's all I have. So you're saying to tell us that their lack of planning does not constitute your emergency. Is that it? No, it doesn't. Okay. You know, protect yourself. So we actually have someone who is wanting to ask a question. Um, that would be Joseph Scott. Joseph, you've got your hand raised. Do you want to unmute and ask Phyllis your question? No, I wanted to ask you a question. Um, okay. When you had that person that wouldn't remove their mask, did you discontinue the signing or did you, what did you do? Well, just told them, had a conversation with them. Said, look, if I can't identify you, then we don't have a signing session. And if you want your loan to close, then we need to, I need to be able to verify that you're the same person that's on the ID. And after a little hem and hawn, they finally removed their mask. And like I told them, I said, it's gonna be three, maybe five seconds. That's all I need, just give me a beat. And they did. Thank you. So Ronnie or Carol, do you have anything to add to Phyllis's um, little talk yes. about Yes, for now? I, I do. Um, uh, and I just love what she's doing. I'm so proud of her. Networking. We have been really encouraging our graduates to do that. And it's working out well for a lot of them. I, I'm hearing that they're actually forming little groups themselves, reaching out for, uh, for people within their own area, meeting up at, <clears throat> excuse me, restaurants and getting to know each other. I belonged to one years ago when we were in uh, Phoenix area, there was five of us and um, we, would, we would be able to, if we got overload of work, we were able to call our friend and say, uh, can you handle this one? Because we formed a bond of trust where we knew that we weren't going to steal each other's uh, customers from, from, you know, from each other. And when you have that kind of trust and a network like that, it works so well because you're not only recommending to somebody that you trust, but you're recommending to someone that you know is going to do a good job. And that makes the, the companies, title companies, signing services that are hiring you 
knowing that when you offer up another agent, if you're not able to cover it, that it's going to be somebody of quality. Uh, it goes a long way. So I really encourage people to reach out to people, even if you've never spoken to them, you don't know each other, just a little phone call. Are you interested in perhaps working together, forming a little networking group uh, in our area? So we know who's around us and what kind of skills and training that we've had. So I, I just want to add that it's really beneficial to everybody. Perfect, thank you. Mr. Ronnie, any input? You, you, you are network. You are the epitome of network. <laughs> if you can't, I, can't refer it out, you buy it. Is that right? I try. Um, <laughs> I want to actually comment on the, the burnout part of it. Um, I'm all about networking and we have a video uh, in our notary stars program where we talk about connecting. I love that you're promoting a notary to have at least one notary or two. Um, to give an example, before I, I talk about the burnout, uh, two years ago, I was running around for my wedding and I left a package on my counter that had to go to UPS. And the notary that I trust that has keys to my home, keys to my office, someone that can get in was able to go in and get that package while I was on the road to Vegas for my honeymoon. Um, so having someone that you can work with, that you can trust, that has keys that, you know, you could allow to pick up a package for you that, it, but it needs to be somebody you can really trust. Big, big deal. When it comes to avoiding burnout, we actually wrote, wrote an article about this on Notary Stars. And I love that we're talking about it this week. I find notaries who work too much make way too many errors. You know, it, it, sometimes it's not about self-care. It's about understanding that you're protecting your future by not working too much. In the beginning, if you're brand new, you shouldn't take on too many because your brain is really absorbing the experience after you've done your training. If you're seasoned, you there, there's a point. And, you know, we, we have a review process. We review up to 100 and something files a night at Unlimited Inc. And our reviewers break those packages up because we know after you see so many in a day, they all start looking the same. And, you know, even things can get through a scan back review, like a missed stamp or everything, because we're clicking through the screen, looking at every single page, just like you're at the table, double checking your work. Uh, you, you have to realize that your brain can only handle so much. We all have a CPU. We all have a certain amount of processing. Mine may be, you know, I'm not going to say faster. Mine may be slower than someone's. My, yours may be faster than mine. We all have what we can handle. And we should gauge ourselves by what we can handle, not pushing ourselves to the limit. You know, work to live, you know, don't don't live to work. Amen. So we have another question in the chat window. It's from Delphi Winters. Delphi, do you want to unmute and ask your question? If you can. Okay, so Delphi, you may have um, another audio going at the same time while you're trying to talk. Okay. Okay, so I don't know what we have here, Delphi, but we're able to hear you. There's a lot of feedback. So you've got either your uh, monitor, your computer, and your phone both streaming this uh, because we're hearing the feedback from one or the other. Okay. Yeah, I muted that right away. Um, maybe type it into the chat and then we'll come back to it because uh, that's too much feedback right. there. All righty. Anybody else real quick have a quick question they want to ask? Uh, okay. Going once, twice, three times. Oh, you bet. Hey, um, do you want to go ahead and unmute and ask your question? Sure. Do you, <coughs> do you suggest taking more training until you get your first assignment? Carol, do you want to answer that? 
she wants to know if you if um, you would suggest that they continue training until they get a first assignment. Uh, absolutely and beyond. One of the things that I love about uh, our, my connection with Ronnie is that I take, I train, I'm a really good trainer and we've got amazing students and graduates. They're, they're just doing terrific, but I'm limited to the basic training. I, I don't go through every kind of set of documents and there's a lot of things that I don't cover. We because Ronnie and I connected a few years ago when he reached out to me and, and we've, we've got this wonderful bond and he started Notary Straw, uh, Stars, which takes the training so much further than I could by doing the boot camp and by going through the different types of di documents and, and everything that he's raised, raised the bar even higher than I did. And, um, and I'm really proud of what they do. But yes, the bottom line is always continue your training. Things are always changing. Just be sure that you, when you do training, make sure that you really look to, to somebody who suits your own style, your, their way of teaching, because it's very important. You might be a person who needs somebody who's really energetic and out there and tells you how much money you're gonna make, <laughs> which, don't always don't always take that for granted, but um, yeah. But the uh, training, yes, I would have I would have suggest to everybody you always continue training, keeping up on your state laws, um, and and just knowing what you're doing. I would agree with that wholeheartedly. Um, I've been doing this for so many years. You would think I'd know everything there is to know, but I am telling you, I do not. Things are changing all the time. And even the best athlete, pro football player out there doesn't say, I got all my training in college. I don't need to be trained anymore. They still have a coach, don't they? They still go out for training in the spring. They're constantly training. And that's what we should be doing too. Constantly training. Yeah, Phyllis? Yeah, I have a... Um... So in Texas, uh, I'm in Texas with, with Carol. Carol and I are both in Texas. But my training is uh, Texas-based training. So uh, strong, strong believer in, in uh, training. Just continue the training. Now, what we did is we um, created for Texas notaries a Texas notary learning patron membership community. So we just do constant training, constant training. And we have a whole library full of training. And all, again, all of our training is geared towards Texas. So all of our notaries are very well trained and they support one another. And so there's a good network of notaries in that group that uh, you can refer work to. And, and I have also, to say, if you are in Texas, you definitely want to get with Miss Phyllis because Texas has a lot of notarizations in, in a loan package. I have done some Texas properties and it is, Texas is a whole nother animal. Uh, almost everything in a loan package is notarized. It is. And that's why I try to encourage people, you know, you need to, if nothing else, you need those basics for your state. And that's why I just focus on Texas. I mean, number one, I love my Texas notaries, but you know, I just think it's so important. So if you're in Texas, check us out. Texas is half the country. <laughs> and Texas is a world of its own. Today alone, we had rain, 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 fog, sunny, real hot, and then back to some drizzle. <laughs> it's like, Oh boy, you know, it's that old saying, if you don't like the weather, stick around 15 minutes, it'll change. <laughs> so we have a couple of more questions here. Uh, Kimberly Espinosa, would you like to unmute and ask your question? I didn't have a question, I'm sorry. Oh, okay, not a problem. Somebody else put their hand up here and find them. 
We have Oki McClure that has a question there. Yes, I, have, I actually have two questions. My first question was, um, I just graduated Notary to Pro and um, I'm going to try to continue to go on the Notary Stars. I wanted to know tomorrow, is that uh, something that's open to people who aren't members yet uh, that you're having tomorrow? I, the, um, think tomorrow night that y'all having an event for Notary Stars. And then my second question was, I haven't taken an assignment yet and I'm kind of confused. I know sellers packages are some of the more light ones and long mods, but besides those two, what, what would you say would be the best place to get your feet wet? Are purchases something I need to leave off to later or what, is the, what are the best packages to take right now? I would love to be the one to answer this. Um, I think you, once you've done Notary to Pro, especially if you've come through Notary Stars as well, but even if you've done Notary to Pro, you're ready for refinances. You can do any assignment that there is. So I wouldn't put that off because you need to start fueling back your investment. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't be afraid of your own shadow. And this is something that, you know, we, we talked about in the last prime time, actually not being afraid to get started. And I've been really trying to put that into our notary stars as well. Um, you, you can continue training while you're taking assignments. Purchases, I do tell you to check the funding date if you can, but just remember those close faster than refis. Seller files can also close faster than, you know, than the regular packages. So mm -hmm. make sure you're double checking your work, but you have to get started, uh, you know, at some point. So if you've done your training, don't wait to get out uh, into the field and don't listen to all this, you know, I don't work for, you know, this amount of money. Take those assignments that might be low ballers in the beginning and get your feet wet with those companies that you're probably not going to work with when you build your business up. Start getting that experience out in the field and continue your training. Make it, a, you, you know, I think 200 orders is like the maximum I've ever heard of for like the bigger, bigger companies to hire in notaries. Go out and work with notary to go at $65 an order. Sure, it's not that great, but get those 200 orders out of your way. And I see notaries, in the, especially in a refinance boom right now, you can get 200 orders in a month if you're really hustling it, four months if you're not. Um, don't hesitate to get out there and start using your training. It, it, real life experience is part of it. There's no college graduate that starts making six figures or <laughs> you know anything right after they graduate. It is you know the people who go out, graduate, and start working, and then use that education so you have to use the education that you that you invest in I, i'm sorry to jump in there but i feel so passionately about that because i've been on a lot of the notary stars like i'm like okay you signed up in november and it's february why aren't you taking signings i want to add to that if i may because i did i used to have the attitude with my students that they were worth a lot and i always told people don't take less than 100 or 125 for a signing uh, but you know what? I've changed my mind in the last year. Or so I've been telling my graduates, they don't have to do more than about 10 to get enough experience to start really working with the title companies and working with good signing services. Take those $60 signings, take, as long as it's not going to cost you a lot. You're not going to drive two hours round trip and do a big package of 200 pages for 60 bucks. But get that experience, take whatever you can get at the beginning and consider it part of your training. Don't worry about if it's, if you're not gonna make a lot of money from it, it doesn't matter because you're paying for additional real life experience training and that's what you really need. And, you know, we have that list of, of really uh, four and five star co uh, companies, uh, including some title companies that do hire our graduates and they, a lot of them just hire them with no experience at all. But I prefer to make sure that you have some experience and know what you're doing before you really take some of those heavy duty uh, signings. So I agree with you, you gotta get out and work. Don't put it off, don't be afraid to get started. And we okay. both mentor people, both Ronnie and I mentor. People. Don't let me add one other thing to that. Just don't wait for you to feel totally comfortable in doing this. You're always going to be nervous starting out. That's not going to go away until you actually get out there and do a couple. And don't worry about 
messing up on your first assignment. If you know your stuff, you're just nervous to do it, just tell them, I'm new, but I'm very well trained. <laughs> so bear <laughs> with me while I kind of muddle my way through this. I mean, use your personality um, and, and just be yourself. Carol always says this, be yourself at the table. And if you can be yourself, you're going to establish a connection with that signer and both of you are going to forget that this may only be your third signing or your first yeah. sign. Okay? And another thing you uh, need to keep in mind too is that when people, when you're sitting with people and you're going through the documents, they're looking at you and what they're thinking is how does this person remember all of this? Mm -hmm. How amazing is that? I could never do that. That's what they're thinking. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So, and, and what Beth said is true. This is the one thing that I just tell everybody. If you're just yourself, whatever you are, I mean, I'm kind of quirky and I'm very clumsy. Uh, things have happened to me that I'm a little embarrassed about, but it happens and it was me. If you are not 100% yourself when you walk into that door, the little alarm, that little gut feeling that we have about people when we first meet them goes ding, 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 ding. And they're not going to trust you completely. But if you're just yourself, they'll feel comfortable with you and they'll trust you and the, the signings will go terrifically. Okay. Thank so you guys. And congratulations. Thank yeah. you. We're going to take one more question and then we're going to move on to the next topic because we're getting kind of backed up on time here. So Elise Hazard, do you want to unmute and ask your question? Well, I would like to ask the question, Beth, <laughs> but I think it's such an old topic. I hate to bring it up again. It's so stale. I'm having trouble printing just in this last couple months. Lend, lender documents only and um, they seem to be formatted differently and so they just get stuck in my print queue but won't go through mm. i don't Did you send that. me an email to contact at notary stars i bet i know your problem because the last two months there was a a problem and please don't everyone um just so you know you can check it it came out from signature closers and everyone but you know, this one specifically, uh, there was a big update with Adobe about the last month and a half. And they every signing agency sent it out to their notaries. And if you're new, you might not have gotten it if you're not on the right list. There was a big update to, to, to Adobe that affected printing properly. I see. Thank you for that. No problem. Send me an email to contact at Notary Stars and I'll forward it to you. Just put the subject printing problems and I will I will send that back to you. Now, if you're watching the replay, please don't email me. I'm not getting emails. <laughs> Gotta say that. <laughs> Thanks very much. Valid so for one night only. We're gonna actually take one more since that was a printing issue. I want to get Leticia Speaks um, to ask her question before we move on to your subject, Mr. Mickle. Leticia? Hi, can you guys hear me okay? Uh -huh. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for this opportunity. Um, my question is this, uh, it's kind of a little story and, and a question. I kind of dived in head first. My father was a signing agent and he inspired me to become one. And I'm active duty right now in the Air Force, 20 years. Um, and I'm in Minot, North Dakota. Like who goes there? other than, you know, born and raised or family members, right? So it's a very remote location. Um, and I decided to become um, a notary public to serve the servicemen and women because sometimes their work is very demanding. They cannot get to a bank or get to a place during normal business hours. So I normally take care of them during the evenings and the weekends. So that's what happened. Um, then I had this drive to find, um, you guys spoke on, um, networking. Um, I found somebody that had been a notary in the County for about 15 years. Um, and I, and I now rent a place for, from him, an office space for about a hundred dollars a month, which is great. So I'm grinding 
but I'm grinding based off of um, NNA websites and doing some learning on my own. I haven't actually done a notary to pro program or anything like that, but I've been grinding and I have been doing closings. My presentation is there because the military has instilled that professional professionalism when I'm, I'm there. Um, I'm currently passed to deploy. So I'm going to be away out of country and I'm sad because I've, I'm really having a passion at being a signing agent. And my question is how can I take this with me um, to still keep in training um, so that when I'm back, I'm even better. Is there something that I can still, is there some value that I can get with the program? I received this email about this um, event and I was excited to join. Um, I don't even know how I got it, to be honest with you. I didn't, I didn't sign up for anything that I know of. So I'm very honored for the opportunity. Um, well, Phyllis might be able to give you the best answer because she's kind of your cohort. When it comes to yes, and thank you, ma'am, for your service. I truly appreciate that. And thank you, Leticia, for your service. We appreciate you. Uh, so, Leticia, what I think you're saying is that once you deploy, you want to continue your training so that when you get back, you can jump into this, you know, feet first. Yes, and, and I will tell you right now, um, I think my biggest thing is... Um, the documents and learning them inside out, really being able to speak to them with confidence. I, you can show me a document right now and I'll tell you where it needs the proper place to sign and where to put your X and all that great things. But to actually to know it, like maybe if you gave me a title, I'll be able to spit it out, you know, and know exactly what it is. So I'm not sure if there's something in, something along those lines, but I don't want to lose the skill um, because it'll be, you know, um, probably later this year that I'm able to actually do another signing again. So then have you taken any training? Any training at all? I've done some through the NNA website. There was some training, minor training, enough to get me my credentials yeah, I would suggest you take uh, Carol's uh, Notary to Pro course. So, I mean, because she's going to go over those documents and everything is online. So you can, in the self pace, so you can do it at your own pace. As long as you have an internet connection, you'll be able to do it wherever you go. And um, you will be able to go over that over and over again so that when you do come back, you'll feel comfortable. And then Ronnie's uh, Notary Stars, they have a bunch of training in there. So I would recommend joining uh, Notary Stars and take advantage of their training. So I you would, can just do a, just training, training, training <laughs> while you're gone. I would love to just comment on this as well. When you get your Notary Pro certificate, um, you can, we always recommend you start with that. And then what it does is they have a, a stamp on there when you receive that certificate. And in your notary profiles, even if you're inactive, it's going to show when you got that certificate. So the clock starts ticking because they might say, oh, well, you know, uh, they got their certificate on 3-17-2021 and now it's 8-17-2021. So they're looking at like how much, how long have they had this graduated? You know, just like I've got my degree in whatever year, people that I apply for are going to say, oh, well, they've had it this long. Then Notary Stars continues to bring you update information along the way. So you can do both. I highly recommend starting with the Notary to Pro. Uh, if you want to do the package deal, you can get it on Notary Stars as well. But start with the Notary to Pro so you get that timestamp on your certificate of when you got it. And then when it's in your notary profile, it's going to be there while you're gone. Right. So people are going to, I mean, I hate to say it, they're going to think you've been out in the field working all this time if they're not looking at your order count. So, because I know I check notary to pro, when did they graduate? And because we use a lot of notary to pro graduates at Unlimited Inc., our other company. And if I have five notary to pro graduates respond, I look at who's had that the longest, I have to say. I mean, 
you know, if it's, you know, to someone who just graduated and someone who graduated two years ago, that person graduated two years ago, that's an Notre Dame Pro graduate is going to get preference because they've had two years of experience and they're an Notre Dame Pro. So I would say get that and then continue your education with Notre Stars as well. Uh, and then if you're in Texas, make sure you go to Miss Phyllis as well because you can never stop training. And I'd like to interject a couple of things, if I may. Uh, Letitia, first of all, I just sent you a private message. Call me tomorrow. Okay, I'll get yes, you yeah. off set up really yeah. good. Um, when it comes to the, uh, the notarization and whether you're supposed to, uh, you know, sign bait or whatever, I want to encourage everybody on this call, do not, do not flag your document. Because if you flag them about where people are supposed to sign or initial or date, you are losing an innate um, ability to train your eyes to look at the documents, not, at, not for colorful flags. And if you depend on that crutch, I guarantee you're going to make it. So what you want to do always is use your eyes. Scan those documents. If you if it takes longer to do the signing, if it takes longer to, to prep your documents, then do it at first. But it'll That's become funny. so so much of a part of you once you train your eyes to look for those spots. You're not going to make mistakes. And also, I want to add, when you're new, I don't know how many people have been doing it a long time or who's new. Always at the table before you leave. You're going to tell people if you have something to do, if you need to change the sprinkler or put the laundry in or whatever you need. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm going to stay here because I need to double check these documents. And when I say double check, I mean double check every single page and make sure that you have not missed not one initial, not one sig signature or date because that could cost you an hour, two hours for initials that you didn't get because you have to go back. And then another thing, go around the corner, especially when you're new, go park around the corner, go through them again the third time. I've, I can't tell you how many students have called me and said, I can't believe it, but I parked around the corner and sure enough, there was a set of initials that I missed. And I was right there. I walked back in I said, oh, something else I forgot. Let's do it, five minutes and everything's perfect, no problems. We rarely, rarely get anybody that has a mistake. And the attitude is always, if you make a mistake, you accept it graciously, you accept the responsibility for it, and you get up off your butt and you go fix it, like now. So I hope that helps. Perfect, thank you, Carol. All right. So we are going to move on to Mr. Ronnie's piece in this program. He's going to talk to us about a couple of things. Loan document source book, um, giving you a warning about using public computers and printers, um, and page separator software. Take it away, Mr. Mickle. All right. So um, I'm, I'm going to make this quick. Uh, we've actually added this and everybody who's done Notary Stars will tell you, I kind of laugh at the NNA training. If you are new, when you post on Facebook, I just graduated the NNA, I'm a loan signing agent. Everyone that's been in the industry kind of laughs and goes, no, you're not yet. Because there's so much more to learn. And I don't endorse much that the NNA does. However, this book, the loan document source book, um, We've actually posted this as one of the stops that you need to get on uh, your journey as a loan signing agent in Notary Stars. This book is amazing. It's 500 documents bound as refinance, seller, buyer. You know, for those of you who want to get documents, touch and feel them. Um, I have rubber bands around it, as you can see. These, these pages, and I hope I don't drop anything, uh, they have a nice white border uh, on the inside and you can take it to FedEx and get it, I don't know if you can see that, you can get it debound, so they'll cut the spine off of it. And if you are using a good scanner, it only took me 10 minutes when I got home to scan the entire book onto a PDF that I could reprint, draw on, write on, do whatever I wanted to with, 
um, as a refinance, buyer's file, seller file, reverse mortgage. Um, so you can you can get this book and it's like $46, $49. We have it posted on Notary Stars for the public view and the members view. I don't endorse a lot unless I actually buy the products. Um, so this is an amazing tool and it's probably the only thing that I endorse other than having your background check for the NNA. I wish they did more for us other than take our money. Um, to be honest, Carol, Miss Phyllis, myself, Miss Beth shouldn't have to be training people, but I feel like their 60 question test doesn't do a lot. This is one good thing that they did. Um, I wanna talk about using public computers. Uh, this is a PSA for me right now. Um, I actually have a notary who's paying $1,200 credit protection right now for using a public computer uh, to print their documents and scan them. There's been other signing agencies that I know of that have had the same problem. You are to use your personal computer. You are to upload to secure, secure portals. If you so choose to get a secure email, I know Ms. Carol really endorses those. We're getting ready to add them on notary service. <laughs> but you cannot use a friend's computer. You cannot use FedEx. You cannot use UPS to print documents with personal information. You are compromising your signer's information when you put them on a public computer. You are compromising your signer's information if you go to your friend's computer. If you have a computer that you're using that is shared by the family, you are compromising your signer's information. Whether you download or you do scan backs, it's even worse if the documents are complete because their signatures are on it. You cannot use public equipment. Uh, we have a big article posted on Notary Stars. It's one of the most recent articles that we wrote. Uh, you can be charged up to $1,200 per year per occurrence. And I know that um, Ms. Carol recently mentioned a flash drive, but I wanna tell you, if you use a flash drive, be very careful. I got a call this year Thankfully, it was a general notary with no loan signing information on it, but one of our notary stars in uh, Tennessee had downloaded every single file onto their flash drive and dropped it in a parking lot. They opened it up and they just happened to see the company name Unlimited Inc. Uh, and called me and we got it back in touch with the notary. Thankfully, it was an honest person. Some people are not so honest. Had someone else turned that into the wrong person, that notary may be charged $1,200 per occurrence for sharing information for every person on that flash drive. And I think there was 126 files on that flash drive. So if you have 1,200 times $126, have at it. But please heed this warning. Do not use public computers. Do not use things that leave your, your, your personal space and make sure you have lockout security on your computers. So if you have a Surface Pro or you're using a device that goes out in the field with you where you're downloading documents and printing mobily, make sure you have a lockout security in place. Um, my next topic, because I'm going to roll through these, was the page separator. Um, so I know Carol has it on Notary Pro. We have it on Notary Stars as well. It is a great backup, and I, I encourage you to have it as a backup, but it is it does not always work. Um, when you separate those pages, you have to know how to use that program. They put one file here, one file there. You have to know how to assemble those files. Um, it has been a problem recently, even though we endorse it. I know how to go to page preview and Adobe and see how many pages there are, you have to know how to compare what they give you back to what was there. So don't just stick your file in and say, great, I got 79 pages back. I'm ready to go. That's not how that works. Make sure you look at the original PDF. How many pages were in that PDF when you got it? Then when it gives it back out to you, um, you have to make sure that you've scrolled through on the print preview of Adobe and see how many legal size pages there were. I advise you to count legal versus letter because they'll then you can just do the math. Um, but you cannot rely on a secondary source if you're not using a dual trade printer. You should have proper equipment. You should know how to use it. You should know how to maintain it. But in a pinch, my printer blew up one day and I have a backup printer that's a single tray. 
I used face page separator and it worked for me that day, but you should have the products that you are going to use up front and only use it as a backup. It is not your, and if you're just starting and you need to get three signings under your belt, I, I get it. But once you get those three signings, a printer is a part of your deal. You know, three signings can buy you a, a good dual tray printer. So be very careful with that. Um, so I'm going to cut it off at there. Those are my three main topics that I wanted to talk about. Uh, I'm going to kick it back to you, Ms. Beth. Okay. So we did have a couple of questions that were emailed in, um, and I want to at least touch on those really quickly. Maybe not all of them. I think we've got 13. So we're going to hit the um, newest ones in, in the package. And this really can be for any of the three of you. So the first one is from Gary Blum, and that may be Blumber. My copy looks truncated, but at any rate, Derek may be on the call today, I'm not sure. But his question is, what is the best way to discuss or justify travel or convenience fees with customers? Okay. Uh there it is Derek Bloomberg. He is one of my um, one of my Texas notary patrons. Um, so and he had sent me the, the questions he was going to ask. And I always tell my students that you need to already know how much you're going to charge to go to any zip code. I always when I'm going to going over stuff with them, especially how much they're going to charge and in, in their in their travel and everything. I tell them, okay, identify the, all the zip codes that you are going to serve. And then identify how long is it going to take you, or how, or how much, how many miles is it, is it from your main location to any particular zip code. And then create a, uh, a price for each one of those zip codes. So you already need to know, or have an idea in your mind, you know, how much you're gonna charge. And remember you're doing this for, you're in business, you're doing this so you can make a profit. So you base how much you're gonna charge over, you have to find out how much you are, how much it's costing you to be in business. Cause that's the only way you're gonna be able to make a, a profit. Because just because you charge somebody, let's say uh, $50 to do a notarization, that doesn't mean you made $50 because you have to think about all the money it's costing you to actually be in business. So when it comes to determining what to charge, you have to first find out how much is it gonna cost you to be in business? And then how much is gonna cost you to travel from point A and to point B and make a profit? So this is something that you need to spend time on. I always encourage uh, my students also to uh, work with the uh, Small Business Administration on setting up a business plan because you really, this is so important to me before you even start doing any of the signings is to know how much you're gonna charge. So what do you need to charge in order to make a profit? And then you have to stick with that because you know, you're in business to make money. I have a question. As a loan signing agent, are we charging for our, um, notarizations or that's included in the fee? that the um, company who hired us. Yeah. So yeah. are we charging a separate fee for the notarizations? You, you the should charge for itself. the loan signing, the loan signing itself, the loan signing, the entire signing. And there, you know, and that's better because you have the flexibility to charge whatever you think the signing is worth. I do want to add something to that so that everybody will know. Of course, you need to, if you don't, if you're not savvy with taxes and things, you need to consult with somebody. But I do want you to know that when you're putting uh, the information into your notary journals, that the only amount that you should be putting in under fees is what you're actually getting paid for the notarization. So let's say you get $10 a signature. 
and you've done three notaries, you're getting paid a hundred and a hundred dollars. You've got uh, the the notary fees would be thirty dollars. That's what you want to put into your notary journal, uh, and then someplace else, like notary assist or something, keep track of the the total fee, because when the time comes to it and you're doing your taxes, your tax accountant, or if you do them yourself, will look and see what you've been paid totally in fees, but they'll be able to deduct anything that was uh, absolutely for the notary uh, notarizations. So that's a huge, that would be a huge benefit for you. You're going to lose money if you report the full hundred without putting the deductions. Uh, of the actual notary fees, which are non-taxable. So Ms. Carroll, we need to move on. We have Barbara Ray yet to make her presentation. So who's that? <laughs> Barbara, <laughs> Barbara, she, um, uh, has a little side business and she makes beautiful handmade greeting cards. Um, so our giveaway today is gonna be a 10 pack of Barbara's cards, but I want to bring Barbara on for just a minute so she can kind of give you an idea of the cards that she makes and how she can also customize them for you as a notary um, to use to send that to your clients. And, and listen, I can't stress enough how important a greeting card is um, that goes out occasionally and sometimes for no reason at all to your best customer. That's going to keep you top of mind. So, Barbara, if you are ready, would you unmute and give us a little talk here about your, your um, cards? Well, hi. Thanks. Um, I wanted to share my screen. Let's see. I don't know if I'm able to do so. I had some samples I wanted to show you guys. Let's see. Um, Oh, I guess not. I think Ronnie can appoint you as a presenter. I'm, I'm, I'm coming right behind you there. I'm just trying to get you pinned for okay. Spotlight. And then let me get you. I think you can share now. Are you are you trying to share? Yeah, it's yeah, it's saying disabled. Okay, so let me see if I can. Nope. Let's see. Um, not yet. Well, let me just say the importance of the of re the reason why. Beth kind of touched on it a little bit, you know, in this day and age, we have so many people that are on their phones via email, via text, that to have a handwritten, handmade greeting card that you can put your business card in and say, thank you for your business, can go a long way nowadays, because everybody, you know, I mean, I know COVID's hit us, and we're not allowed to really kind of touch people and things like that. But having a handmade card, is so personal and I think it's a really really good thing to be able to have you should be able to share and now. to give out okay let me see here okay thank you Ronnie okay so I know it just these are just a few little things that I put together um so let's see there we go so you can do thank you cards birthday cards here's just a few like here's a simple thank you card you don't need much on it if you're going to send it out to loan signing companies or to signing services to just, like I said, put your, your card in and be able to say thank you for the business. Um, if you're interested in any of the cards, I will put my website at the end. But these are just a few of the kind of cards that you know are available, as well as being able to send out. So go to the next one. That one reminds me of my parents, by the way. They're going to be celebrating 58 years coming in June. Oh. Okay. And then this is the card that I made for the giveaway that we're doing. You're going to get one pack of 10. They're blank inside. So you'll be able to um, send those out. You can write a little word of thanks in here. You can do it any way that you want. Um, and then here's where you can check out some more of my cards as well. So thank you very much. And Barbara, can I ask you a quick question? Uh, sure. Can you do um, any personalizations? On oh yeah, cards? of course. I do everything. Um, 
you know, if, for example, you wanted to do like this little love card with um, a specific background, or you wanted specific colors um, on here, if you wanted to where it says, you know, happy birthday, and you wanted to put somebody's name, we could do somebody's name. I do also do hand calligraphy. So, and I also um, have, see, like I did, this didn't turn out as like I wanted, but um, that's handwritten. But I also offer um, like a mail out package. So if you wanted to do, say, you know, 10 or 20 cards, you wanted to give me the addresses of the people, um, I can, you know, custom make the cards, send them out for you on their birthdays, anniversaries, whatever. Um, if you would prefer to mail them yourself, I can also address them for you so that it, you do have calligraphy on your envelopes. Um, so yeah, anything could be customized. And if there's a special stamp or invitation that you're looking for, uh, I've done that as well. I did my cousin's wedding and baby shower invites for her, all hand stamped and all colored in by hand, which is what these are right here. Awesome, awesome. Okay. So in um, regard to that, for the giveaway, anybody who is interested in receiving the uh, free 10 pack of cards giveaway, um, I would like for you to type a number in the chat window between one and 50. And I want to add something to it. I, of course, I see all the cards that she does. I mean, the, some of them just blow my mind. They're just so beautiful. Uh, but I wanted, I wanted to also say how important it is that we get calls, we get cards and things and lettered sometimes from our graduates. And there's just nothing that does it for me like a personal card that somebody would actually sit down and take the time to, you know, thank you to talk about what they're doing and even for signing services title companies it's just that extra touch that gives them just a special insight into who you are so uh, i i believe in those cards and and she just does a great job and i, I i'm very proud of what she does we have a win barbara the winner of the free 10 pack of cards that you're giving away today is Maxine Watts. How would you like Maxine to contact you? Uh, Love Maxine Watts. She works for with us up in the northern side of Arizona. So, yoo <laughs> oh, Maxine, what you could, the number was 36, by the way. So, Maxine, uh, you can email me at Barbara, B A R B A R A, at notaritapro.com. Please let me know that you won the cards. Don't just email me because um, I get so many emails a day, I won't know what it's in regards to. Congratulations, Maxine. And I just want to say uh, uh, something too about these uh, cards that Barbara creates. I just think it's a wonderful idea and a wonderful way to stay in contact with your customers and let them know that, uh, how much you appreciate them. You know, a lot of times we get caught up in trying to look for new business, but your best business is going to be those who you've already you've already uh, done business with. They're going to be your best. Uh, they're going to be your best marketing and your less expensive marketing. So if you take care of those customers, guess what? They're going to tell other people about you, and that is the best free advertising that you could ever ask for, you know, because people like to do business with people that they know. So, I mean, this is just a great way to show that customer appreciation. Okay. Well, guys, we're just about ready to wrap it up here. What do we got? 23, we probably have time for one more question. Let's see who's had their hand up here for a while. Um, Delcy, I'm sorry, hon, I'm going to skip you because we already had you once. There's somebody else that needs to get in. This is Michelle Gordon Heiderkan. Did I say that right? Yes. Yes, you did. Thank you for taking my question. Um, I want to know a little bit more about Notary Gadget. I was using it and I could put in the address from where I am to the signers, but I wasn't sure how I do the... Um, or when I leave UPS and then back home or so forth. 
where on Notary Gadget, if you know, you guys have recommended it, where on Notary Gadget I could have from when I leave UPS or FedEx back in that? Phyllis or Carol, can you help out? Um, well, I don't, I don't use Notary Gadget. I started off with Notary Assist many, many years ago. And uh, I absolutely love it. It's no, no disparagement against Notary uh, Gadget. I understand people, it, you, you know, say, like Notary it. Assist? Oh yeah. Notary okay. Assist, yes. Yeah, that's what I know I the, do. I know the owners personally, uh, they're, 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 uh, Customer service is absolutely excellent, and I love the product. And they're working on some things now that I know of that's coming out that I can't talk about, um, but it's great. Yeah, great. I, I'm like Carol. I just use. Oh, you're muted, Phyllis. Okay, I'm like Carol. Okay, thank you. I use <laughs> Notary Assist also. So I've never, I have used Notary Gadget, and I do like Notary assist better than, than Notary Gadget. It just seemed to me more user-friendly. Now they might've updated some things with Notary Gadget since I used it, but it's, it's been so long. So over the years, so I've always gone back to using Notary Assist. And if you're a Notary to Pro student, once you're a graduate, you're gonna have access to them. 30 day free trial, 25% off of the cost of the program. <laughs> I am an older program graduate, so I'll give that a try. Congratulations, Michelle. <laughs> Thank you, Carol. Miss Carol, <laughs> and all of you for what you're doing for the notary community. Oh, thank you. I just want to add that it's sixty-four dollars with notary assist for the whole year. I use VinBooks. If anyone has ever heard about VinBooks, this allows you to email them your confirmation and they put the e information pertaining to your assignment into the program, which documents everything for you about your, your assignment and also keeps track of the number of notarizations, your trip and everything that's involved with the assignment. Is that Denise? Yes. Oh okay, thank God. you. All right, guys. So we're about to wrap it up here. Um, I do want to make mention that our next meeting for primetime notaries is going to be held next month on the 21st of April. It's going to be 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So whatever that equates to in your area, just you guys are going to have to figure that out because daylight savings time escapes us we don't do that okay so april 21st and then watch your facebook groups and your other um calendars um to and emails um for those invitations to register for that class you do have to register if you want to attend um one last thought um any carol or um phyllis i know ronnie's here took a, an emergency call are you here yeah i got i got i got, I got, I got. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I have a, a last thought. Again, I am just going to uh, say, reiterate that those cards that Barbara creates to, for you to stay in contact with your clients and show that, that appreciation, you know, take advantage of it. It's really going it, to, it will pay for itself, I guarantee you. Yeah. Thank you. Am I find another event going on tomorrow? Is there is 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 there two parts to this meeting? Uh, so I'll answer that question. Uh, tomorrow is we do a free live onboarding for uh, Notary Stars every month for anyone who has gotten that email. Um, we do a walk around of Notary Stars to show you what's inside. So if you are a Notary Star, it's not pertinent to you. But if you are interested in Notary Stars, we actually show you everything that's on the site, all the training that we have available, what the calendar looks like. Um, and we also show you how to maximize your listing, even if you have a free listing. Uh, so that is the event tomorrow uh, that's advertised. It's not in relationship to primetime notaries. Okay, guys. Um, and uh, I'll give a last thought if you don't mind. First of all, somebody asked what Barbara's email address is. It's Barbara. 
Oh, she put it in the chat. Okay, good. Uh, also, she put in the chat somewhere where she's posted that blog about SPW, Signing Professionals Work Group. And I just want to say one thing as you progress in your career and, and, and in life, always listen to your gut. Your gut's going to lead you the way about what's right, wrong, and what makes you feel under, uncomfortable. There's a reason for it. Listen to it. And guys, I want to put in our last thought as well. Um, at Notary Stars, we have a zero tolerance policy for um, being unkind to our fellow notaries. Uh, as we end this meeting tonight, I just want to remind you, and I don't want to sound like Ellen because she got a big uh, backlash for you know being the be kind lady. But in our industry, we are we are a niche industry, and we have to stick together and we have to treat each other kind. When you're in notary forums, don't look down on other notaries who might need your help. If you've learned something, share your knowledge with other notaries. You know, some of them can't afford to go to training classes. Some of them can't afford the time. They may have day jobs. We never know what another person is going through. So really um, take the time to help your fellow notary. When you see someone posting a question, look at them like they could be me. You have questions too. You wouldn't be here if you didn't. And I know maybe none of you that tuned into this call and have been respectful tonight might be those types of notaries. Unfortunately, the only thing that keeps a person from getting a notary stamp in most states is a, you know, not having a felony on their record. But we are a, a community and we need to stick together and we need to train together. We need to come together. We need to keep making these events bigger and bigger. And we do this specifically for, you know, the older generation, but we have plenty of stuff for the younger generation as well. And we invite both parties to each. Just remember when we come to these events or we, when you see someone in a forum, that's your brother or your sister, you know, not to get biblical, but we are in an industry where a lot of people want to come at us and we can lift each other up and we can give each other the confidence and the strength and the the know and everything that we need together. So just make sure that you you take that with you and, and keep giving back to our community. Amen. Guys, so thank you all for being here. We have been given 86,400 seconds today to say thank you. So here's my thank you. Thank you for being here. We appreciate it. Thanks. We're grateful for your participation. Maybe we'll see you next month. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Bye -bye. And if you're on camera, make sure you're waving right now because I would love to show everybody on YouTube all those hands waving. Miss Wanda, raise your hand and wave too. There you go. <laughs> everybody, I can't see you. All right, guys. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.